and a good spiritual morning to you once again. I'm Father Cosmas. Thank you for joining me today from my prayer corner here at home for a quick chat and a cup of coffee. So I thought for today we would talk a little bit about um, e-learning or remote learning. Uh, not that itself, just sort of discuss a little bit uh, the circumstances surrounding it because for many parents now uh, their kids are back in school and they are sort of wrestling with this remote learning uh, monster. Now some schools have gone back into session um, in different capacities. They're alternating weeks or you know they're going back in limited ways. Um, they're grouping grades together, doing different things. But for the most part uh, a lot of the local schools uh, and a lot of schools around the country I think just decided uh, at least for the beginning of the fall term, to just stay closed um, to normal attendance and do a remote learning curriculum. And uh, so I can tell you, having now experienced remote learning in, in various ways, because I have um, multiple children doing remote learning at different levels, um, from first grade to fourth grade to uh, 10th grade, and actually the college student hasn't started yet, but college remote learning is starting as well uh, in a week or so. Um, so I, I can tell you from the limited experience that we have so far with it, um, it's, it's not easy. It's rough. Um, it's, it's really challenging. It, uh, it's going to be challenging for a lot of different reasons uh, for people. I mean, I saw that news story recently I think it was in Salinas, um, which is Northern California. I remember growing up driving through Salinas all the time. And there was a news story about these two kids that were sitting uh, on the ground outside of a local Taco Bell with their little, looks like Chromebooks or laptops because they didn't have Wi-Fi at home, I guess. And they needed to use the Wi-Fi at the local Taco Bell for their remote learning to be able to go to school. I mean, that's just sad, obviously. Uh, and, and tragic circumstances surrounding this situation which our kids find themselves in. But uh, for many parents, as apart from those kind of really extreme, tragic, uh, difficult circumstances, just the day-to-day uh, -the -day grind of trying to do this uh, makes you realize just how tough it is to be an educator, what a gift it is and a calling it is, especially at different levels um, for small kids uh, as well as the older kids. And I think that very, very quickly, parents are going to get rather tired of this and are going to realize, well, they're just not kind of set up uh, to handle, you know, the ability to do this. Uh, it's, it's only a matter of time before we come up with a remote learning drinking game uh, by which every time you hear the word mute yourself, sweetie, every parent is going to take a, a drink of their Pinot Grigio. Every, unmute yourself, honey. You're going to take a, a shot of, of something because this is a, an absolute nightmare is what it is. Uh, and we're trying to have kids sit. I mean, we were telling our kids not too much screen time, not too much screen time. And now we're telling them, no, no, you have to go back on the computer another hour, another hour, another hour. And uh, they said, I, I need a break. I don't want to look at the screen anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. They're not interacting with anybody they're trying to do it, uh, you know, over the screen. And, it, and it's just, this is not the way education was meant to be done, especially for the really little ones. They cannot sit still and just look at a screen and expect to be engaged hour after hour, uh, five days a week. It's, it's rough. But as I said, the implications of this uh, made me realize, you know, just how different people have different gifts. And teachers, as I've always said, they have a very unique and special gift. It is a gift to be able to, to sit there and to be able to do that, especially with the little ones. The, the patience, the tolerance, uh, the gentleness that you have to have to be able to do that, that is a wonderful blessing that God gives only certain people. And now we're kind of expecting everybody to just magically have that gift. If that was the case, everyone would be homeschooling their kids. And uh, thank God they're not. Um, you know, we're sending them to professional educators. And of course, the teachers are there. The teachers are helping. But you can see that their amazing gifts are really not being utilized. They're, they're being squandered. You can see, wow, these are talented people. Uh, and unfortunately, the gift is not being used uh, to its fullest capacity or anywhere near it uh, in this fashion, through this medium online. But it makes us... Uh, hopefully become aware of just how important it is for us to recognize what gifts God has blessed us with. 
and uh, and that all the gifts are unique and they're they're special. They might be different, but one is not more or less valuable than the other. We don't tend to value perhaps certain professions as much as we should, but that is a gift from God, and it's and it's a kind of a calling to be able to do certain things, and we should take some pride in a good way, in a good sense of the word, in, in whatever gifts God has blessed us with, and we should use those gifts uh, as much as we possibly can, you know, for his glory and to help as many people around us as much as we can every day. Once again, may our Lord and Savior bless us and keep us this day and every day. Amen.